Welcome to Damia, Sage of Stone. As far as our opening hand goes, we have one land that is not that good. So let's go and mulligan on this one. And uh, Prismatic vi Yeah, this is good. We'll keep on this one. I'm kind of Actually, this really does work out well. I'll kind of explain what we've got going on with the deck here in a second with this Damia build. Because it's been a minute since we played Damia. But um, we'll kind of talk about the changes. So let's go and get our turn started. There we go. Uh, we're going to keep these. And we do have to put one card on the bottom. Um, I Actually, at this point, I kind of like Eternal Witness to bring that land back just in case we need it. So um, let's get rid of Undying Evil. Click OK. Let's go and lead off with the Prismatic Vista. Uh, we're going to crack Prismatic Vista. And if we're going to end up going for that Eternal Witness line of play, we do need to grab a green source. So I'm just going to grab a forest. There we go. Have that come into play. And uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So we're playing Damia, Sage of Stone, Detta. Skip your draw step at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have fewer than seven cards into your hand, draw cards equal to the difference. Playing against Erebos, God of the Dead, Indestructible, and then a Devotion 5 turns into a creature. Your opponents can't gain life, then for a two-mana activation, uh, pay two life and draw a card. So, there we go. Um, run into Temple of Mystery. That is nice, but I really want to get down Talisman. So, let's go Command Tower. Let's go for Talisman of Dominance. Uh, that's going to be 1-2. Get that down, and then uh, pass the turn over our opponent. So we did cover both commanders. Give a quick shout-out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to head on over there and build a Sultai Good Stuff deck, oh, they've got all the cards that you may need for Sultai, uh, Damia, or Volrath, either way. Um, Volrath's a ton of fun. If you haven't seen it, be sure to type in Volrath Jolt into YouTube. You'll be able to see some of those videos. And uh, let's give a quick shout-out to InkGaming.com. If you want to check out my merch booth, I do have a merch booth set up over there. Go to their website, type in Jolt539 in the search bar to see it, or use coupon code Jolt for anything off the website, 10% off so there you go treat yourself and uh, last but not least i started a patreon so if you'd like to contribute to the patreon uh, there's a link down in the description below get your name at the beginning or the ending of the credits or both support cool content like this and if you can't do that hey no problem just uh, tell somebody about the channel i would greatly appreciate it so now it's officially free time let's have some fun uh, we do run into polluted delta uh, we're slowly kind of getting towards damia so i kind of like this so if we're going to end up doing this let's go um, we're actually making our land drops too which is a really good thing so let's go for unbound flourishing uh, we're going to have that enter the battlefield and i think what we'll end up doing is going for this temple of mystery um the main reason we're going to do this is so we can get the scry going the scurry the fever uh by you yeah that's good we'll put it on top and we don't really have a ton of action on our side over here but um one of the things with Damia is you just want to ramp and you want to make your land drop every single turn um that way you can get down Damia, refill your hand and then not really worry about what's happening on your opponent's side of the battlefield so but uh, now that it is free time let's talk about Damia. so um for a long time, Dami is one of the early decks that I built for the channel. I love Soltai. It was kind of the first premier Soltai commander. Oh, Mind Shatter. Ugh. All right. Okay. All right. So we run into that Bayou. Let's get Bayou down. That's a one, two, three, four, five. That was pretty rough. Uh, let's get down Bayou, and then we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So, but one of the main things that we're doing with Damia, or at least in the very beginning, was when I built Damia, I wanted to build Soul Type Planeswalkers with Damia, which was fun. But over time, as the, the deck, you know, I kept playing the deck, I would run into a lot of frustrating things with Damia to where it just, oh, Villainous Wealth. That sounds pretty good. We can copy the spell for two. Man, I'd love to hit them. If we can just get a little bit more mana with Unbound Flourishing, but we're going to try to do that. I guess technically we could for two, and then maybe hit some artifacts, but I don't like digging. Like, we're going to hold on to it, so we'll pass the turn. But yeah, it originally started off as uh, Damia Planeswalkers, and um, as time went on, each set that would get released, if you're new to the channel, what I do is, um, I definitely do new commanders, but some of the old commanders, what I end up doing is I go back through, and I keep them updated. So um, Damia has been one of the decks that I've been updating basically since I started my channel. And so since it started off as Soul Type Planeswalkers, you know, Damia is not the best planeswalker commander you know it does help you draw a lot of cards but it was almost kind of like there's two competing strategies of getting damia down drawing cards and then supporting planeswalkers on the battlefield Ooh, nature's lore that is perfect uh, we're going to take that so that's going to allow us to grab a what are we going to grab probably end up grabbing a we do have two yeah we'll probably end up just actually just grabbing breeding pool i think that sounds like a pretty good option so we're going to grab breeding pool not going to pay two life, no. And then we'll have that come into play tapped and then pass the turn to our opponent. So uh, we're still going to hold on to Villainous Wealth. I mean, we have nothing else to do. We got hit with the Mind Shatter. And um, I'd like to go for a little bit of uh, kind of something sort of test out of our opponent's hand by getting down Damia. So hopefully we can hit the lane drop. Uh, but yeah, with Damia starting out as Planeswalkers, um, as time went on, I ended up just 
you know, each set would come out. Because when you just overload Dami with Planeswalkers, that's going to cut back on a lot of ramp. That's going to cut back on a lot of basic Sultai building blocks. Um, and if you're building a Sultai commander deck, you want to have answers for a lot of things and then get to the late game and go for something like Villainous Wealth. And so um, over time, I just slowly started cutting Planeswalkers from the deck to where it just really wasn't Sultai Planeswalkers anymore. And so, uh, ooh, Torment of Hellfire. Okay. Um, we can't gain life. Um, well, it's not going to matter with Torment of Hellfire. Now, that's going to be Villainous Wealth for six, but it's only going to be the top three. One, two, three, four, five, six. And honestly, I feel like we just tap out for Damia. We could try to jam a quick Torment of Hellfire. You know, let's just do this. Let's just pass the turn. Opponent doesn't have a board state. If they spend a lot of turns, like, drawing a bunch of cards with Erebos, we can maybe kind of catch them off guard with Torment of Hellfire. I kind of like that. Hopefully, we can run into some sort of card draw or some sort of way to kind of ramp up. You know, if we just hit, like, a Thread Dynamo or a Hedron Archive, our hand is just beautiful. So, um, there's no threat from our opponent. So, we're going to wait this one out. But yeah, so I started cutting Planeswalkers, and just got to the point where I was like, I don't know where I'm taking Damia. And so they kind of did a quick rebuild. I did end up basing it off my new build of Volrath, because Volrath is basically just a core Sultai deck. And then with that in mind, I ended up kind of tweaking it from there. You know, I could probably cut about... Because with that Volrath deck, you've got a good base of counter spells, good mix of removal. Ooh, Tails End, okay. Yeah, I think we still pass the turn. I mean, because Villainous Wealth for X is three or less is, it's okay, but that's not really what we want to do. And if our opponent gets silly with Erebos, uh, paying that life, then we can just kind of catch him off guard with the Torment of Hellfire. So, and then with a Tail's End, there's a lot of things we can probably catch with that. So, um, we'll see if they end up paying that for me. And all right, so they end up going for that. So, but yeah, long story short, end up rebuilding Damia. Um, the core concept of this deck is that uh, we're going to ramp. We want to ramp as much as possible. And that way, once we do get down Damia, we can utilize the like massive amount of card advantage that we will end up going for. So it's going to allow us to deplete our hand. It's going to allow us to refuel our hand afterwards. Um, the other thing is, you know, if we're ramping a lot of stuff, you have a lot of X spells in here. So it ended up kind of building this kind of Damia ramp spell deck first, and then plan B is just to find Unbound Flourishing and then really allow us to close the game out. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the game plan. So, all right, opponent's not going to swing in with Extort or with uh, Crypt Gas and let's see what we hit for the turn. Oh, Ponder, that is exactly what we want to see. We just need something to get this hand moving. All right, so we're going to go for Ponder, Vampiric Tutor, Supreme Will. Um, Supreme Will will allow us to dig a little bit deeper into our library to go for a land drop. Or if we end up going for Vampiric Tutor, that's going to make us... We'll still draw into it. It's just going to put us off for another turn. So basically, we're in the spot now to where we can... Let's put Delay on top. If we Vampiric Tutor, we'll draw into that. And then we can set us up for next turn. If we Supreme Will, we can maybe hit a... Yeah, let's... I, I kind of want to go Supreme Will. All right, so we're going to put Vampiric Tutor on top. And then... But we already know what the other three are up there. If we actually... If that's what we end up going for with Supreme Will... Okay, so a little bit of a sequencing error on my part on that one. We're not going to shuffle our library because we hit Supreme Will. We'll do that during our opponent's turn. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, so we'll have Supreme Will. Um, we can leave it up as a counter spell. Then we can actually Vampiric Tutor and then set whatever we want on top next turn. If we run into something else, then that'll be good. But I kind of like this option of Supreme Will and the Tail's End as a little bit of a little bit of an option. They are kind of starting to build some uh, mana with Nykthos, but if we can catch a spell with Supreme Will, um, we'll end up taking that because we know Vampiric Tutor is going to be on top. So uh, Pono's going to go for an Erebos Trigger. And we could Tails End if we wanted to, but I think, yeah, we'll just go and let that go on through because let's say they do end up casting some sort of Legendary spell. Um, feel pretty good about that. So we'll let them kind of do their turn. But yeah, long story short, this is going to be a Damia Ramp deck, Unbound Flourishing. And um, we still have kind of like your instant army in a can um, style creatures in here. We have the double squirrel creatures in here, which is pretty cool. The Deranged Hermit and then something else. I'm trying to remember what it... Deranged Hermit... Either way, you kind of have this weird squirrel subset tribal. Um, opponent's going to go for... Oh, this is going to be a... Okay, so we can... That's going to be a lot of mana. Let's go for that Supreme Will. Because they don't have enough to go for that. Yeah, let's go Supreme Will. Counter target spell. Yeah, because we've got time. We can just kind of wait this one out. That'll allow us to hit the Vampiric Tutor. And make sure that we're not just going to lose to a random Exsanguinate. So let's see if they want to pay for three for the Supreme Will. And, uh... Oh, and excuse me. I guess I miscounted some mana or something like that. 
Maybe I missed a charcoal diamond. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that was a little bit of a misplay on my part. For some reason, I thought it was just shrine and swamp, so I don't know where that... Maybe I just missed charcoal diamond. I'll have to look back on that one, but yeah, that is a uh, misplay on my part. Sorry about that. And so it's going to put us on Vampiric Tutor. Uh, next turn to grab another land. It's going to allow them to swing in for... I think we can still bounce back from this. But yeah, sorry about that. I don't, I don't know... I'll go back and watch after this, but yeah, I must have just missed, because I thought they only had two exact mana. Oh, that's what it is. I just did not factor in Cryptcast. Yep. <laughs> that's what I was like, where did they get that extra mana from? But it uh, it was from Cryptcast, so uh, now I know. So we do run into that Vampiric Tutor. Um, we'll probably still end up setting this up for next turn. That's going to be five, nine, that's going to be 11. We can still kind of survive off of that, but that's still going to be pretty rough for us. So um, let's, yeah, let's just still go and pass the turn over to our opponent. Because they're going to be able to swing in for damage, and they'll still allow us to end up going for a Vampiric Tutor. Worst case scenario with Vampiric Tutor, if we end up going for, like, Mana Crypt or something like that, that will allow us to kind of go for a really nice Torment of Hellfire or Villainous Well. So, yeah, that's, you know, sometimes where, you know, they have Crypt Gas on the battlefield. Like, I know they got down Crypt Gas, but when you're giving commentary... um your brain just forgets little interactions like that. You forget that, oh yeah, they can tap down for two swamps. So um, like I mentioned, misplay on my part. But hopefully we, that's not what magic's about. We can bounce back from something like that. So um, opponent's going to have the extort ability off of Crypt Ghast. Now I think what we can do is we can actually, since this is a triggered ability, I think what we can do is I think we can actually, yeah, we can actually go for that Tails In on Grey Merchant. So let's do that. So it's going to be Tails In on Grey Merchant. So not too bad. Kind of bounce back, back, uh, bounce back from that just a little bit because that would be pretty rough with them gaining that life. So we're going to go for Tails In, uh, counter that triggered ability. And that'll still allow us to end up going for Vampiric Tutor. Uh, maybe they get a little aggressive with some of these Erebos triggers because we end up with the Double Torment trigger. That'll be, yeah, yeah, let's go for those card draws. I like it. And uh, with Torment of Hellfire, they can sacrifice some more stuff on the battlefield. So I'm kind of thinking this Vampiric Tutor is going to be pretty good. And it's, but yeah, oh yeah. All right, get down. <laughs> And that's going to put them down to 14. So we will end up going Mana Crypt and going for Torment of Hellfire. Because I, I kind of like that. All right, so they're going to swing in with the crew. That's going to be a five. Oh, it feels good to counter like a <laughs> Grey Merchant trigger like that. Uh, let's go Vampiric Tutor. Uh, we're going to lose two life. Let's put some stuff on top of our library. Yeah, I like going for this uh, this Mana Crypt. Especially if we're going to follow it up Villainous Wealth or Torment of Hellfire. So let's grab Mana Crypt. Uh, that's going to go on top of our library. Uh, we can get that down for next turn. That'll be a double torment for basically one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be torment for like 12, which would be pretty good. Kind of like that. All right. So let's go. Uh, let's get down Mana Crypt. Uh, let's cast that one. There we go. Get down Mana Crypt. Let's go for this torment of Hellfire. It's going to be black, black. And we're going to get the double from Unbound Flourishing, which is going to be really nice. So X is going to be 6, so it's going to be basically Torment of Hell, Hellfire for 12. Okay, so they do have 10 cards in the hand, so they're going to have to get rid of all of their cards in their hand if they want to. Um, we'll see how they want to sack this one out. Hopefully we can just kind of set it up to where at least if we just survive for next turn, that'll put us in a spot where we can go for this Villainous Wealth, which would be really nice. So we'll see what ends up happening. Okay, that's going to put them down to two. That's just going to leave Crypt Gas on the battlefield. That is a wonderful thing for us. They need up holding five cards out of the ten in their hand. So um, that's really going to set us, set us up really well for Villainous Wealth. Um, typically with Villainous Wealth, you want to get, you know, with Villainous Wealth, you want to have as much, you know, XB whatever as possible, as big as possible. But with Villainous Wealth, as long as you get to about the five spot, the six spot, that's really going to help you do some really good damage, or at least generate some sort of value. And especially with us being able to go unbound for X equals, because that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Especially with that land drop, that's going to be Villainous Wealth for six. So we can get some good stuff going. Now, with our opponent holding on to five cards in the hand, uh, we've seen Guild, we've seen Languish. Playing against Mono Black, I just this is one of those games where we're probably not going to get down Damia unless we have some sort. Oh no, Exquisite Blood! If they cast a spell, and I think they're going to be able to combo out from here, that's going to be a bummer. Let's see. I think this is going to get it. Yeah, because whenever they gain life, they lose life. Okay, so good game to our opponent. They're going to be able to basically just kind of combo out from here. So, um. We did try on this one. Tried to go for that uh, Torment of Hellfire. Uh, me going for that Supreme Will counter spell really set us back because what I wanted to do is buy us an extra turn and then um, Supreme Will 
use the filter option to grab Vampiric Tutor and cast that. So that really set us back a turn. So that was definitely a misplay on this one, which allowed them to get to this point. But you can see what we're trying to do with the deck, uh, Torment of Hellfire. Yeah, you know, I hate mistakes. I don't enjoy mistakes like that. And little sequencing errors where you just lose track of Crypt Gas or something on their side of the battlefield is pretty much little things like that do happen. So, But we at least got a good showing of Torment of Hellfire. Almost had that Villainous Wealth, which has been a lot of fun for. But I am happy with the build of Damia, you know. And also, getting hit with the Mind Shatter very early on. That um, I feel like we did pretty good for getting hit with the Mind Shatter. And then we were just top deck mode for about the next last six turns. So, But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Crick, son of Yagmop. And as far as our opening hand goes, yes, we're going to keep on this one. I like it. We've got Demonic Tutor. We've got Double Swamps. We have Obnixilis and a uh, really nice little consistent source of card draw. And uh, some Come to Temptation, which is going to be a pretty good way for us to pay some life uh, once we get Crick on the battlefield. And I think I kind of like this. So um, we'll probably end up going Demonic Tutor on Ancient Tomb just to really kind of kickstart this. And then uh, we'll see if our opponent wants a Mulligan Pass 7 or not. Okay, so let's go and lead off with Swamp. And then um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. And also, before we jump into the video, I am uh, recovering from some chest congestion. And uh, so if my voice sounds a little bit deeper, or if I kind of take a weird pause and I speed the video up because I need to go cough or something like that, um, hey, now you know. So, But I'm getting to the end of it. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, it was just, man, I got sick like on uh, Thursday night. And uh, I was going to record, not Thursday night, but uh, basically I got sick Wednesday into Thursday and I was going to record Thursday night for Friday's video, but my voice was like, bleh. And I was like, I think I will end up doing uh, more damage than I will if I just sat here and do nothing. So that's kind of decided. It's like, yeah, let's just go and take this one easy. So I did have a Friday video, but we'll talk about that in a second. So let's go and go Ancient Tomb. And we're definitely going to go for, uh, yeah, I like that. We're going to grab Ancient Tomb. That's going to put us for Crick next turn, and I do like that. All right, so we are playing Crick, son of Yogmoth, Lifeling. For each black mana in a cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana. Then whenever you cast a black spell, put a plus one counter on Crick, son of Yogmoth. Playing against Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter. Uh, whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-lane card, but a converting mana cost less than that spells, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you don't cast the revealed card, put it into your hand. And uh, there we go, looking at a turn... Three Crick, I kind of like that. So let's go for Ancient Tomb. Uh, let's go Crick. That's going to be one, two, three, four. Actually, let's do it this way. Click on our life total first. There we go. Put us all the way down to 24. It's going to be one, two, Ancient Tomb. Oh, this is, if you're keeping score at home, yeah, go and check the I'm getting worried box if you're worried about me paying a bunch of life. Um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So we did cover both commanders. Give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you know, build your very own black deck that you can just pay a ton of life and get a lot of cool stuff on the battlefield, head on over there. They've got some great options for you to choose from. And let's give a quick shout out to InkGaming.com. And go to the website, type in Jolt539 to check out my merch booth. If you want to get a t-shirt or a play mat, or you know, treat yourself, use coupon code JOLT for 10% off anything off the website. And uh, last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. You can get your name at the beginning or the ending of the credits and help support cool content like this. And if you can't do that, hey, no problem. Uh, tell somebody about the channel. I'd appreciate it. So now it's officially free time. Let's have some fun. So we've got Ancient Tomb. We've got Swamp. And I always love it whenever I, uh, I'm able to squeeze the little uh, shout out to the sponsors <laughs> during our opponent's turn. That always feels really good. Um, it's like very good sequencing, commentary sequencing on my part, a little behind the scenes. All right, so we've got Deserted Temple. Uh, we do have Succumb to Temptation for one mana that we can actually end up going for. I think at this point, I actually kind of like going Lightning Greaves because that's going to give us a... Yeah, let's do that. So we go Deserted Temple, because it's going to be a land for the turn. Let's go Lightning Greaves, and then we're going to be able to get that, because this is not really a Voltron deck at all. Yeah, it's, it's no Voltron at all. So once we get uh, Crick protected, oh, we're actually pretty good to go. Um, we do have Succumb to Temptation. Now, we can actually end up going Omnixilis, and I think I kind of like that just a little bit better. So um, let's go Omnixilis. We're going to pay two, and that's going to be one, two, three. And that's going to put a counter on uh, Crick, and it's also going to allow us to go for the minus three on Rashmi. So let's go minus three on Rashmi, because what we want to do is we're just going to get that commander tax going on her. So uh, let's go and swing in for three. We need to make up some of this life that we've lost. So we're going to go and swing in for three, see if uh, Coiling wants to block or not. Either way, we're going to get that life link 
uh, gain, which is going to be pretty good for us. And then we'll go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So, uh, but yeah, as far as the Crick deck, if you haven't seen Crick before, um, there's different ways you can take Crick. You know, there's a Storm version of Crick out there. Um, that's kind of where I took my villain deck. So whenever it came time to build Crick, I was like, I just want to play with all the, you know, the mono black cards that have like triple black that I typically don't run in a Gonti deck or something like that. And so it just felt good to... Like, we've got Helldozer in here. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of land destruction. But with Helldozer, it's one of those that has, like, a triple black cost, triple black activation. You get to untap it if you pop a, a like, non-basic land. It's just kind of one of those, like, you know, I'm not going to try to slam down Helldozer as quickly as possible. But if we get to the point to where we can, like, get Helldozer down and just, like, push the game to our side. I kind of like that. Um, other than that, we've just got some good stuff. We have Midnight Banshee, Lord of the Void. This is basically just kind of like a mono green stompy deck, except it's just mono black, and which is uh, pretty cool. Paint a lot of life, which is always fun. So, in fact, let's go and go for that. So we're going to go for the plus one. We're going to draw a card and lose a life. Um, we would like to get down staff of uh, the Death Magus. That way we can get a little bit of extra uh, life gain to kind of protect ourselves. So uh, let's go and do that. So that's going to be one more color lens. Let's go staff. Um, that way we can start casting some of these black spells and uh, be in a pretty good spot. Um, let's go. Yeah, let's push in with Crick. And yeah, let's go for one more Succumb to Temptation. So we're going to go for one. That's going to be one, two. Oh, look at that. We're going to get some life gain. We're going to put Crick up to four. Um, we will at least gain one life of staff. Now, little effects like staff, you know, it may not seem like that much of a difference, but it really does. At the end of the game, when you're getting a lot of card advantage, if you're going to get into a position where you can just kind of basically turn Crick sideways, even if you're not dealing commander damage, if you're not, well, you know, getting in for commander damage, as long as you're just dealing combat damage to get that life gain, that's really going to help you kind of just keep this, like, borrowed time effect going of being able to pay life draw cards pay life draw cards um it is a very good feeling so we're gonna knock our opponent down to 23 uh, we go back to 15 and then we'll just simply just go for mind stone that way we have access to just a little bit more mana so have that mind stone into the battlefield than anything else uh, pass it back over to our opponent um but yeah other than that oh opponent cycled lonely sandbar and um, that's pretty much kind of what we're trying to do with the deck we do have a lot of artifacts in here to kind of help us accelerate crick really quick um that's pretty much the game plan you know if you're on the fence about building crick um this is going to be an aggressive commander you know there's a lot of times where you want to get down crick on turn three with an ancient tomb and uh have half of your life total gone by turn four, turn five. You know, that's pretty much the way you want to play it. So if you've never built a deck like that where you're aggressive with your life total like a resource, I highly recommend giving it a shot. Um, you could definitely build Creek, uh, Crick, not... You could build a creek on Magic Online. Um, you can build Crick very, very uh, efficiently and cheaply on Magic Online and have a lot of fun with it. It'll really teach you how to kind of use your life total as a resource. That's kind of one of the fun parts. So I'm um, just going to go for the plus one on Omnixilis. We're going to cash in a card draw and uh, lose a life. That's going to put us down to 14. And then we run into Mana Crypt. Uh, so let's go Swamp. That's going to allow us to... Oh, yeah, and also, whenever you just make a land drop with staff, you're going to get a... Oh, that is that is just beautiful. Now, we don't really have a ton of value stuff in our hand. We've got some, you know, Chromatic Lantern, Toxic Deluge. Um, we can actually just Toxic for one, and that'll kind of clear the board out. That'll get rid of Birds of Paradise. I think that might end up being a pretty good option for us. So let's go Toxic for one. And at this point, we're kind of at the point now to where we... Because then that's the cool thing about Crick, is you can actually just use it in this scenario to where, you know, we just need to ramp up into the point to where we've made all of our land drops. And then once you get to that point, you can just kind of use Crick as like a little bit of a bonus. So um, let's get the staff trigger. We're going to get that extra counter on Crick to where, you know, you're not having to just every single time pay that Frexine mana for some of your mana symbols. So... All right, so we're going to get that extra counter on Crick. That's going to make it a 5-5. Five, five. It'll go back to a 4-4 four, four once Toxic resolves, but that's really going to clear the way for us to swing in and uh, get some pretty good life gain after that. Okay, so let's go and push in for 4. That's going to knock them down to 19, put us... Actually, it's going to make it 19 all. And then we... I don't think we need to go for Mana Crypt. We could try to fight a... Could go for a Temporal Extortion if we wanted to. Yeah, if we're going to be aggressive, like I mentioned, I, I think that would be a uh, pretty good way for us to attack our opponent's life total next turn. Okay, so let's go and push in for four. Yeah, and I think I do like going for Temporal Extortion. Uh, yeah, this that's a very quick thing to go for. So, all right, so we're going to go and swing in for four. It's going to make it 19 all. We're going to gain that life gain, and then uh, we'll go for Temporal Extortion on the back end. 
That's going to be 11 total commander damage. Yeah, and let's go for that. So we're going to tap out for Temporal Extortion. Okay, so we're going to get an extra counter on Crick. We're going to get the Staff of the Death Magus. And then, oh, look at that. We'll see. No, we're not going to pay half of our life total. We'll see if our opponent wants to pay half their life total. Because that'll get it down pretty close to where we might. All right, they do end up paying that to counter that. And that's going to be an extra counter on Crick. And then we'll end up going for uh, Chromatic Lantern. Because that'll end up being one, two, three. Yeah, and that'll be just enough for a Force of Despair. So there we go. That's going to be one, two. We'll have Chromatic enter the battlefield. And then we're in a pretty good spot to kind of take over from here. You know, if our opponent doesn't get anything down next turn, um, let's say they do finally get down Rashmi, they get down another creature. Uh, we're going to have Force of Despair, which is basically just going to be a one-sided board wipe. All right, Potus going to scoop it up on this one. So, yep, once you get down Crick and you can just pay Frexian mana and uh, just kind of take over the game. You know, and you can also use stuff like Temporal Extortion, you know, that pay half their life to counter this one. That puts them down to nine, whatever sort of value they get down. Uh, we're going to have Crick coming across. We've got that life gain so uh paying fixing a mana for uh, for life total to get some card draw or at least paying for mana is a pretty nice thing so if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe thanks bye